Hey everybody, how are you doing? And welcome to a new video about an EQing myth I don't understand. And although I don't, I'm going to try to understand it today. A thing that I see audio engineers doing a lot these days is low passing on, on separate channels or on their master bus and like with a really steep low pass filter. And they sometimes combine it with a high pass filter to really put the sound in a box. And as always, I don't get it. The thing with high frequencies is that there are harmonics in there and they can go up to as high as 100 kilohertz or something. And although they aren't directly audible to our ears, there seems to be a difference if you cut them off. And to be honest, I've never bothered with altering them because it never annoyed me. Maybe it annoys someone else. And well, if you think about it, we're not used to hear frequencies above 15 kHz anymore. Yeah, natural frequencies, but not out of our speakers. Because a lot of streaming codecs cut off everything above 15 kHz. And if they don't, then the high frequencies will sound crushed or, or like I describe it best as sandy, like like there's sand in your in your tweeter. And I still don't understand why they should do that because it's 2018. We're streaming like 8K video on YouTube, and we're doing such crazy stuff on the internet. Why does audio still needs to be compressed down in a lossy way, in a way in which we lose information? And apart from that. It's getting very difficult to get high quality audio these days, getting it in a legal way. Because music is being distributed digitally these days and it's all through those crappy codecs. And I know that this is not something for this video but for a separate video which I will make. But the thing with this is, is that everybody that works with audio likes to have a reference frame. And when we listen to music on our own speakers, which is coming from a, well, crappy source, then our ears will automatically be trained to make the same as coming from that crappy source. The thing that goes into that crappy streaming algorithm does sound much better. And that's what we as audio engineers need to make. We need to make that better thing so that if those streaming platforms get their act together, that we will also sound great and we will sound more open and, and, and those high frequencies will sound better. So I think that that's the reason why people uh, tend to cut off a lot of high frequencies because they are simply not used to hearing it coming out of their speakers anymore. And what I could advise you all is as soon as you find a way, for instance, a title and testing out title, but not having a conclusion about it yet, uh, go on there and try to get master grade quality. So not even lossless or stuff, but the, like the real master files of old recordings of 70s and 80s recordings uh, from the time that you can almost be certain that they didn't do any high frequency cutoffs because they couldn't be bothered by it then. So if you can find them, listen to them and listen to that as a reference. And it's also nice to, to make a record and upload it to Spotify to see what happens with it. Because it's still difficult to, to do some streaming simulation. I know Isotope can do it, but it's still not, not what the streaming platforms do with it. And making your mixes according to that. So, so according from the knowledge you have in that. So you don't need to cut off the highs because the streaming services already do. Anyway, I'm rambling on. I think this is enough for this video. I hope you guys liked it and learn something from it. If you did, let me know in the comments below or with a thumbs up. If you hated it, you know what to do. Press that, that, that thing, this thing. Also, be sure to subscribe, check out my other videos. And if you really like me, support me on Patreon over here. Patreon is awesome. You will get early access and stuff and you can binge watch my videos. And for now, I want to say thanks for watching and bye bye.